The Moth Project is a live multimedia show featuring two musicians on either side of a 16 foot by 9 foot video screen. It is about and inspired by moths. And that is the short answer. The Moth Project was in part inspired by my brother Toby, who is a park ranger and interpretive naturalist up in Canada. On summer nights at the cottage, you can find him outdoors after sunset, taking pictures under a black light of his bed sheet, um, documenting literally hundreds of different species of moths. These creatures are, they're nocturnal, they're highly adaptive, uh, drawn to the flame, even though it's dangerous, and uh, that I can relate to as a freelance musician. It seems to me that biologists and climate scientists are trying to tell us what the, the Earth has been seeing for quite a while now, which is, hey, pay attention. And I believe that artists can step in and help, at least foster an awareness and love for the natural world. So in that regard, this, this show feels meaningful, um, personal, relevant to me. The music in this show is for lack of a better word, diverse. A bit of everything from solo Bach violin to, to is a Joni Mitchell tune, a tune by Chikoria. There are two musicians on stage. Myself, I'm stage right with a keyboard and a laptop that triggers various sounds and loops. And uh, Whitney LaGrange, uh, the violinist, is on stage left and she's playing um, you know, anything from, like I said, solo unaccompanied Bach to ambient electronic sounds through a series of guitar pedals. There are original tunes. There's a tune called Pheromones, which is about pheromones, um, which is what female moths uh, deploy to attract male moths. Right this wave of pure intoxication Past the brook to the sea. There's a tune called Emergence, which is about the process, which uh, is called Emergence, when a winged adult exits its cocoon. Since the visuals are so integrated with the music in the show, we've, we're getting a lot of help from some outside sources. Um, it started with my brother Toby and his colleague Mark Reed, um, and we started with their hundreds of pictures of moths from that one area around the cottage. Some of my own research led me to Adrian Smith, who is a research biologist at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences, and his stunning videos of moths in slow motion flight. Then we were introduced to the macro photography of the late Jim de Riviere, a Canadian photographer whose macro pictures of moths formed the basis of this exhibit called Winged Tapestries, Moths at Large, which uh, people may have seen at the Museum of Natural History in New York. Our uh, design and animation work is being done by John Vondrasik and his company in New York City called The String Theory. 
doing pre-production of this show at my friend Mike Canzaniero's production facility called MCM Creative. Um, we're just getting the show up on its feet and seeing what this looks and sounds like in front of the big screen. One of the interesting things I've learned in this project is the difference between Western and indigenous mythologies, where in Shakespeare and the Bible, moths are cast as the harbingers of death and destruction and doom. The indigenous mode of thinking sort of casts them in a much more positive light. They are seen as symbolically transformative creatures and guides of dream time. I love that. As opposed to like a moth to flame. How many songs use that as a metaphor for fatal attraction, right? I found a poem called The Lesson of the Moth by Don Marquis, which explains this phenomena from the moth's perspective. Fire is beautiful. And we know that if we get too close, it will kill us. But what does that matter? It is better to be happy for a moment and be burned up with beauty than to live a long time and be bored all the while. We are like human beings used to be before they became too civilized to enjoy themselves. One of my absolute favorite books is Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. She writes at the intersection of Western science and indigenous knowledge with a poet's grace and flair. Get to know the names of your neighbors, she says. It's such a simple and powerful act which changes our relationship to the natural world. We're hoping to change your relationship to moths, anywhere and everywhere, indoors, outdoors, concert halls, museums, parks, amphitheaters, or we can bring our own projector and screen if need be. So come on, want to meet the neighbors? Welcome to 